They might be in the Champions League final. They might be in the Champions of England. But we've just scored four goals at Leicester last week, so bring them on. Man City match preview. Welcome back to Black and White Band, you beautiful Newcastle fans. Um, a bit earlier than usual because it's another Friday and I kick off. If it's anything like last week, I'll take every single game for the next 25 years of my life to be a Friday night. Um, but before we touch on the match preview, I just want to get one little rant off my chest. It's been another week this week of Newcastle fan bashing from pundits, which is just... I think I've... I sound like a stuck record talking about it. It really, really is starting to boil my urine. Um, this week, Simon Jordan and Jim White on Talk Sport. If anyone follows Talk Sport, I've got a lot of time for Simon Jordan. He's a football man. He's he's owned a football club. Blah blah blah. I do respect his opinions sometimes. Jim White, on the other hand, he's just really relevant in football because he tried to big up transfer deadline day year every, year upon year upon year. Nothing really happens, but it's dramatic deadline day. And somehow now he's got a job in football because of that. He's kind of irrelevant, really. Um, now, I'm not going to I'm not gonna condone the comments that they said them two got abuse with on social media from the Newcastle keyboard warriors. That's just a load of bollocks. I don't agree with that. But what I'm really furious with, really, is how they've come out. Because we've obviously picked up a couple of good results on Friday. Hats off to the lads. And Bruce was one of the best performances I've seen this season, probably in the last couple of seasons. It was fantastic, and I'm not going to take anything away from that. But for us now to be called absolute idiots, all of the pundits, including the likes of Jim White, to come out the woodwork and say we are stupid for wanting Bruce gone still, it's just absolute ridiculous. Don't don't criticise when the stats were at the lowest. So we had the lowest amount of shots on goal, lowest chances created, possession, just absolutely abysmal football. Around the time of the Brighton game, when we got battered 3 0 and we looked down and out, and everybody thought we were favourites for relegation at that point. Probably even Fulham and Scott Parker did. All these pundits were starting to get on our side. Oh, we we finally starting to see what the Newcastle fans mean about Bruce. And Jim White and, and the likes were totally quiet. Nowhere to be seen. As far hidden under the bed sheets as possible. Suddenly we get a couple of good results and they come flying out the woodwork and start criticising us fans. Us fans who've watched this team for two years now under Bruce, two seasons. We've put up with the shite. We watch them week in, week out, every single kick of that football. We are eyes glued. And these pundits watch little snippets here and there. I'd very, be very surprised if Jim White ever watches Newcastle, apart from when it's maybe the Monday night game or whatever. He's not going to watch us religiously. But apparently we are the idiots who have unrealistic expectations. We have um, a ridiculous opinion that... Bruce is nowhere near what Rafa was, even though the points totals are the same and all this sort of stuff. Again, total disregard for the 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 plan that was in place, in my opinion, under Rafa and the six months of good football that we did see under him, which everybody seems to forget about. Just generally, everything that's gone before suddenly gets forgotten about because we go to Leicester and score four goals. I've had friends this week coming up to me saying, oh, you must want Bruce in charge now forever. No, I don't. I don't. That would make me just as fickle as these idiot pundits who we have to deal with week upon week. Who, by the way, I've lost all respect for. There's hardly any pundits now whose opinions I will take on board. Because they keep insulting us football fans. Who are the salt of the earth of our football clubs. Who have to put up with all of the shit year after year after year. And we are the most entitled people to have an opinion on how things are looking for our football club. But yet these pundits, through their, you know, their tinted glasses... See, a win against West Ham, fair play, was a good win. A win against Leicester, a win against Burnley in the second half, and suddenly Newcastle are safe. Well, what the hell was the problem? What the hell was the problem with the, the other nine? I mean, the whole other nine months of the season was an absolute shit show, but you didn't have Maximin fit, you didn't have Wilson fit. It's not Bruce's fault. Just have a fucking day off, man. People like Jim White getting on his high horse because he's hiding behind his microphone on Talk Sport, try, trying to get some more views on his Facebook and his Instagram uh, video posts with him and Simon Jordan. Just stop insulting us. Do you know what I mean? If, if Newcastle keep playing the way we did on Leicester for the next three months, going into next season, we make some good signings in the summer and we keep performing to that high, you know, just, just the way we did on Friday, basically. I will hold my hands up as someone who has wanted Bruce out for a very long time now and say, yeah, 
He's turned things around. He's a Newcastle fan. Fair play. I'm, there's a lot of things Bruce has said in press conferences that I personally won't forgive to say that he's a fan uh, of this football club, about us fans, about just generally some of the shite that's come out of his mouth. But if we kept on performing to a decent standard now that obviously Maximin and Wilson, if he can stay fit, yeah, I only want what's best for our football club and if I saw more performances on Friday. But I'm not that narrow-minded that I'm going to forget about what's gone on in the previous nine months and suddenly think that Bruce is the best thing since sliced bread like these idiot pundits do. Oh, right, rant over. Man City Friday night. Woo! Probably is one of the hardest games of our season. Always is for anyone. Probably is in world football. Is that one of their hardest games? Bit of a different dynamic with this match this time, though. Um, in the last week, our survival has been guaranteed by Fulham, getting beat on Monday against Burnley. I think it was inevitable we were, we were going to stay up the way the results have gone, but it was guaranteed. So there's no pressure on us at all. Man City's title has now been won because of Man United losing. So going into this game, rather than having relegation security and Premier League title security, both teams playing for those things, there's now nothing to play for. And that, for me, changes the dynamic of the game and actually means, in my opinion, it might be a better spectacle. Pressure's off. Guardiola will tell the players to go and enjoy themselves. Bruce might even tell the players to go and enjoy themselves. Maximin, do what you want. Almiron, get at them. Who knows? Um, so that changes things a lot. I've watched a couple of Man City podcasts this week. Their fans believe that the team will be quite strong. I think they, they are of the belief that going into this match, Guardiola will want to keep things ticking over nicely before the Champions League final, keep the momentum going. And Pep's, you know, I mean, he's fucking incredible, isn't he? I'd probably marry him if I could. Pep Guardiola, I think he's someone who respects the integrity of the Premier League and I'd I'd be gobsmacked if he made like 10 changes and brought in all of his academy players. Don't get me wrong, 10 changes from their bench is still one of the best teams in Europe. If Mares starts, then he's got Bernardo Silva and Sterling on the bench waiting to come in on his place. It's just ridiculous. We are playing against an absolute powerhouse in world football. Absolutely, some of the, you know some of the stuff they play when I watch them, those performances against um, PSG in the Champions League were just incredible. Um, so they are the envy of world football at the moment, and whoever they play, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic side. But we looked good on Friday against Leicester, a top four team. We turned them over. We could have scored more. We were the team that looked like the team battling for Champions League football last Friday, and that's not biased or an exaggeration. We were that good. Um, and Leicester fans, I've got a Leicester fan friend and he totally testifies to that. He keeps texting me saying he's still gobsmacked how that game went. So we are confident going into this game. But you never know who's going to turn up in Newcastle Day and that's always the problem. You get one good performance like Friday and then you could get another game like the Arsenal game two weeks ago where we were absolutely shite. So who knows what Newcastle's going to turn up but I think it's a free crack at the whip massively. Whip, pressure is massively off us. Nothing to play for really at all. But on that topic, again, I don't mean to sound like Mr. Ranty today, but I did post about Callum Wilson's injury on Facebook and Instagram and every Newcastle fan barked down my throat and said, Callum Wilson's injured. Who gives a fuck? We've got nothing to play for now. Get him rested. Get him back for the rest of the season. No issues. And that really, really frustrates me. And I cannot believe I'm going to use these words. But I agree with Roy Keane after the Arsenal game where we got beat when he said that if we keep this mentality of on your holidays as soon as 17th place is guaranteed, how are we ever going to get out of that mentality? And it saddens me so much that Mike Ashley has destroyed our football club and our fan base so much that with nine points still to play for, our fans are happy with our top striker being injured because... 17th is fine and there's you know if we not that we'll win I mean we can beat Sheffield United certainly we can beat Fulham certainly Man City different kettle of fish but if we were to get 7 points out of 9 from the next 3 games we get a draw on tomorrow night against City and win, win the other 2 that puts us a lot further up the league and I'm not saying there'd be an open top bus parade for 12th or 13th in the league but do you not want to pull away Newcastle fans from 17th in the league and the amount of people saying nothing to play for, stick the reserves on, like, it just, 
it just tells me what an awful situation has occurred through Mike Ashley tearing our football club, not into the ground, because obviously financially we are stable, the business sheets are good, but just the mentality of our fans now, it saddens me, and I totally get it, but it saddens me. So there is still nine points to play for, and I would like to see us go into tomorrow's game taking it seriously. I want the players to adapt the mentality that we aren't safe, because I want to see us give Man City a game. If we could get a result tomorrow, it would be absolutely fucking fantastic. So let's have a go at them. Uh, the Man City podcast said that they were a little bit concerned going into the match because the record at Newcastle hasn't been great recently. Maximin's a good player. Obviously, Wilson's out, which is a shaft. Um, but yeah, the, their record hasn't been great in the league up here recently. We won under Rafa. We got a draw under Brucey, two all last season. Who knows what could happen? Um, but... Yeah, injuries-wise, I think I would keep the team pretty much the same. Why would you change it? Wilson's obviously out now between now and the end of the season. He's gone. He's a he's a goner. So for me, I would play Gale, and that's only because Gale would fit into the same style of football we played on Friday. The fast-paced, quick passing, counter-attack, in behind the lines. If you play Andy Carroll, there's been a lot of calls to stick him in because obviously he's not going to be with us between now and the end of the season. Andy Carroll has not kicked the ball for a hell of a long time now, properly, apart from a couple of injury time appearances. You cannot tell me, I mean, he's already slow to start with, that that's going to be the way we want to set up against Man City. Who from the ball forward and hope he, hope he holds it up? Nah, I don't buy it. That changes our style completely from the way we've just played so well against Leicester and caused them all them problems. Yes, Gale's missed a lot of chances for us recently. I'll, I'll admit that. I've always sang his praises in terms of getting him in. When Wilson's been out, but he does seem to miss chances when he gets them. But what you will guarantee with Gale is he's always on the shoulder. Maximin can feed him balls. Almiron, like he was doing for Wilson on Friday, can feed him balls. You've got Richie and Murphy, wing backs, they can ping balls over the top, and Gale will always be looking for that passing behind. Andy Carroll, on the other hand, is just looking to whack one of their centre backs in the face, hold it up, and wait for everyone to push forward. I just don't buy that he's the one that should be playing. Joel Linton, again, slows the game down a little bit. I would have Joel Linton as an impact sub, and I would go with Dwight Gale and just keep everything the same. Willock, keep doing what you're doing. Shelby, well, you know, I, I still think Shelby was a little bit suspect against Leicester on Friday. I think he is getting he's he's getting his praises sung here and there because we've picked up the results, but I don't think he's the answer in that midfield against a Man City team. But again, without Hayden, who do you play? Sean Longstaff, he's looked a little bit mediocre. He's, he's improved, but he's still looked a little bit mediocre. Willock, yeah, get him in, but I guess you would just leave Shelby in. Um, Defence, going to have to be on the game. Dubravka, you're going to have to play even better than you did against Leicester City, mate, if we're going to get anything tomorrow night, because you are going to have some serious fucking shots on your goal. You are not going to have a pleasant evening. Um, but who knows, you get a bit of luck, like we did when we beat them a couple of seasons ago under Rafa, we got that penalty um, from a, a short back pass from Man City in the defence, you just don't know what's going to happen on the day, but if we approach the game in the right way, the same as we did Leicester, let's forget about this we are safe mentality, let's really want to have on our record that we've beat the champions, we are one of the only teams this season to beat the champions, let's, let's go after it with the right attitude and who knows, Maybe Man City might have a hangover. Pep Guardiola said today that they, they've been uh, very drunk, had lots of beer and lots of pizza. So, you know, they might be nursing a hangover from the celebrations. I would be certainly be pissed pissed as a fight for three days off Jager bombs and God knows what if my team had won the league. So who knows? They might take the foot off the gas a little bit. And that's a great opportunity for us to go at them. Um, Sheffield United next week, just... Uh, uh, a, a quick reminder, I've put on Facebook and Instagram, I, I am one of the lucky ones who's actually going to be in St. James's Park. Imagine that, Newcastle fans. February of last year was the last time we were allowed in. I'm going to be in the stadium watching a Premier League game. Oh, mind blown. But I want some Newcastle fans to come and join me before the game to jump on a video, talk about Steve Bruce, Mike Ashley, the takeover, court cases, the season so far, what you've thought of it what you want to see in the summer transfer window, whatever you want to talk about, whatever your favourite pies at half time, you name it, we'll chat about it over a couple of beers. You've got to get around him though. So if you're interested in meeting up with me for a nice casual pint and a bit of banter, 
drop in the comments or drop me an email or a message, whatever the fuck you do over YouTube, or get us on Facebook and Instagram and let me know. I would love to meet up with some of you and have a proper chat about the game, what you expect for Sheffield United, whatever you want to talk about. Um, I'll get the first round in, I promise. As long as you're not drinking any fucking Peroni or anything expensive like that, it'll be Carl and Foster's. Um, but yeah, I want you to be part of my YouTube video to talk about the season so far. And what better time to do it than before we go to St. James's for a game? Well, the, the pubs have reopened. We can sit outside if there's more of us uh, to stick within COVID restrictions and just have a bit banter on camera. As always, Newcastle fans, drop in the comments, like and subscribe. Let me know your predictions for Man City. What you thought about Jim White and Simon Jordan's conversation on Toon fans, if you did watch it. And if you're interested in meeting up with us for a chat before the Sheffield United game. Let's get at the boys on Friday. Free crack of the whip at Pep's boys. See whether we can pick up where we left off against Leicester. Thanks for watching, Newcastle fans. Yeah.